We start with the same framework we had before, with the one exception that we've switched the square for a circle to represent the chance node. The first thing we want to notice is that we've got the branches labeled wrong. These are not going to be choices. These are going to be outcomes because the branches off of a chance node are things that can happen with some probability. So we change this to outcome A and outcome B. In a chance node, each branch has a probability associated with it. I'd like these to center under the names of the branches, so I'm going to do a merge and center here. And let's suppose that the probability here is 80 percent, 0 0.8. Now I could do the same down here. I'll merge and center and just type in 20 percent or 0.2, but I'd make my model a little more robust if I calculate this. And the probability will then equals 1 minus this number. Next, I label the nodes, excuse me, the branches with their values. And let's say that the outcome A is valued at 5, and the outcome B is valued at 9. We recall that the expected monetary value is the weighted average, which is the sum of all of the probabilities times the outcomes. Another way to think of this is as the sum of all of the value of the branch times the probability of the branch products. So in Excel, we'll put a formula right here that will look like this, equals the value of the top branch A times the probability of the top branch A plus the value of the lower branch B times the probability of the lower branch B. We don't need parentheses here because the times has higher precedence than the plus, and so they'll group automatically. But if I wanted to stick them in to emphasize that, I can certainly do so. And the result is 5.8. Finally, a little cosmetic, I'm going to reduce the size of that a little bit, and I'm going to reduce just the first half of the cells there like that, and bring these in a little closer. And there we have the standard look for a chance node.